Good morning. We are in Matthew. We are in chapter 6, beginning with the first verse and reading through verse 18 today. Um, let's pray, then we will read. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for meeting us where we are. Thank you so much for changing our hearts and making us desire to be righteous like you and giving us the Holy Spirit to enable us to move closer and closer to you, making us more righteous. God, we pray that we would not, as we read this passage today, be arrogant and think we have anything figured out, but that we would approach it with humility and thankfulness that you are doing a work in us. Help us remember that all righteousness is your righteousness. That we are just the um, lowly benefactors of your grace and mercy. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and read Matthew chapter 6, 1 through 18. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who is who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. God's word to us today. Okay, what do we observe? Well, Jesus is giving instruction here on how to practice righteousness. He says, don't practice righteousness with the intent of being seen. Don't practice charity with the intent of being praised. Don't pray with the intent of being heard or impressing others. He then gives an example of how to pray. He says, God expects us to forgive people who have wronged us. And our forgiveness to, is connected to that. Then he says, don't fast with the intent of being noticed. Okay, what can we take away? And again, as always, there are many more things we could observe in the passage. But, all right, so we're coming from Matthew 5 obviously. We're in six. That comes right after five. 
and he's just finished basically communicating how impossible it is for us to actually be righteous. Um, and that we must be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Um, so we are to be at, like our Father. He is perfect, we should be perfect. And then he says, okay, let's, let's move on and say you are righteous. You are being righteous. Well, now there's another way that you could mess this up, <laughs> basically. So you're being righteous, but you can still mess it up by practicing your righteousness before people in order to be seen by them. All right, this is kind of like being so humble, you've got to tell everyone you're humble, right? Um, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven if you do this. And there's this, you'll see this theme of, of your Father who is in secret or who sees in secret will reward you. Right? He is in secret. He doesn't necessarily... Um, well, so this is kind of a, a, a complex thing to work through in, in my mind, and I'm still working through it. But So the, the plan of all creation is to glorify God, right? That's the ultimate plan. But God, and he certainly has put his glory on display in creation. And all, we will see his glory revealed at the end, and everything is working there. But day to day, he does not get in our faces and say, like, look at how glorious I am. And so, if we are to be like him, then we shouldn't be doing that either. It says, we must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And it continually says, your Father who is in secret will reward you. Okay, so our Father is in secret. We should also practice our righteousness without attempting to rub it in everyone's faces. So when you give to the needy, right, don't announce your giving. And when you pray, don't pray out in the open, like trying to be as eloquent as you possibly can to impress people with your prayers. When you fast, don't fast to signal how virtuous you are. And so as we read this, we, I mean, it seems almost like, well, do I have to, I've heard people say this, okay? It's, I've heard them say, well, they saw you, um, they saw you give to the needy, so your reward in heaven is gone. I, I mean, maybe not that blatantly, but that ba basic idea of, well, someone found out, so you will have no reward in heaven. I don't think that's what this passage is saying here. Okay, I don't, I don't think this is saying that unless it's completely secret, God won't reward you. Everything that God does to bless us is not necessarily secret, but it is not necessarily done with like a huge trumpet blowing to tell everyone, look, God has blessed Phil. Right? So, practice your righteousness, whether it be giving, praying, fasting, forgiving, with the intent of pleasing God. And if it is incidentally seen by someone else, then that's just, that's just what happened. So let's take some examples. As we look at this, blowing a trumpet before you to, to give to people, I mean, who would do that? That seems ridiculous, right? Is it, it seems a little far-fetched. Did people actually do that? Go out into the streets and blow a trumpet? Look, I am giving to the needy here on the street. Is anyone really that arrogant? Well, lest we underestimate human arrogance, let's think about modern day. How do people give to the needy in America? Well, uh, typically if a corporation or a rich person, a businessman, is going to give to someone, they bring along photographers and they have people write 
about it. Um, they make an ad campaign to say, look at how amazing our organization is. Look at how amazing this philanthropist is. Uh, he or she is such a generous person. You can trust them. You should admire them. You should do business with them. That is very much blowing a trumpet as you give. And, um, and what Jesus says about that is they have received their reward. They will have no reward for that with God because they are not giving to honor God. Whether or not it ends up being secret, they're not giving to honor God. They are giving to honor themselves. And their reward, they get the reward they want, right? The reward they want is public goodwill, increased revenue, right? This is a PR campaign. So their reward is good PR. They get exactly what they're trying to get. So your goal determines your reward. If you go in with the goal of honoring God, whether or not I'm seen, I'm just going to do this. I'm not bringing people along to, to record it. I mean, and churches do this all the time. I worked for a church that every time they went to do something good, some kind of charity work, they brought along a whole team of videographers and photographers with the intent of showing everyone how good they are. And the work is still good. It's still, it's still doing good things. And I think it can still glorify God. But you have your reward already. And praying, would, you, would people really pray in a way that shows off like that? I mean, I think I am guilty of this one. I love words, and sometimes, instead of just shutting up when I don't have more prayer in me, <laughs> when I don't know what to say, I, I, I search my way out right through, through using words. And sometimes I think God uses that in me to go places in my prayer that I wouldn't have gone, but sometimes it's because I feel like, well, uh, everyone else is praying this X amount of time. I must pray longer as well. I don't think that's right. I need to stop that. Um, yeah, or, or saying the words you think should be said instead of praying what needs to be said. You know, and back on this, this giving thing as well, the... the um, I think there's a more insidious way that um, giving for reward can affect us as Christians. Um, this is just, it's not just occurring to me, but I, it just, I've thought of it now. Um, it was, it reminded me of it. And um, this idea that a tithe is tax deductible. Okay. This is another way that we can trumpet our giving and we get our reward. So, do I think that tithing and then getting a tax deduction is wrong? I don't. But I think the question we need to ask ourselves is, would we still tithe if there was no tax deduction for it? Examine your heart at the, the root of this. Would you still give if there was no tax deduction, whether it be the church, some kind of any other 501c3, you know, nonprofit organization? Would you still give if there was no tax deduction for it? Examine your heart. So pr back to prayer. When we pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, acknowledge that he's Father. Respect his name. 
pray for his will and his kingdom. Before you ask any, uh, anything from him, pray for his will. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Pray for your needs. Pray for forgiveness. And pray for help for giving people who have wronged you. Pray for forgiveness for others. And pray that he would help keep us holy and keep us from evil. Forgive others. This is huge here. I don't have time to get into this, but I mean, I'll just say exactly what he said. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will, for, will also forgive you. If you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That is very clear and incredibly scary because our hearts don't want to forgive. And the last section here is on fasting. It's not a common practice to fast now. Um, but it does say when you fast. It doesn't say if you fast. It says when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. But there are other things that we do um, that are spiritual disciplines that focus us. And there are a lot of things we do to signal our spirituality. And I think what he's saying here is, I mean, so we have this... Uh, this really increasingly common phrase of virtue signaling, right? Virtue, virtue signaling. And I think he's arguing against virtue signaling here. Don't go out with the intent of showing everyone how virtuous you are. If you do that, you have your reward already. Everyone thinks you're virtuous, but God isn't fooled. Hey, you've got your reward. Don't expect any praise from God. So through all of these things, I think what I see here is that our righteousness should be, like, it, 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 it says, do not let your left hand even know what your right is doing. Right? This should be like a reflex. Giving should be like a reflex. Praying should be like breathing. It should be natural. Fasting and being virtuous should be something that is natural. But, but even when it's difficult, right? Because fasting is not easy. Even when it's difficult, we should have such joy in it that it looks like the funnest thing in the world, right? Anoint your head. Like, I'm doing great. Even when you're, even when you're struggling through this. And I'm not saying you put on a, a happy face when you're in despair. But when you are struggling to try to be righteous, don't go out and tell everyone, oh, I'm just really working through this thing. And, oh, man, you know, with the intent of, like, look how hard I'm working at being righteous. No. It's joy. It's joy, and we do it in love. And that, that brings me to my conclusion here, which is this. Practicing righteousness should be so natural that it is what guides your instinctive responses. Even when it doesn't come naturally, though, it should be a joyful labor of love. Offered to our God in secret for his benefit alone. And then he's good and he will bless. And that is the secret. Enjoying God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, you are great. You are so good. We pray pray that you would have your way in us, God. That this earth that was described as your footstool would glorify you. And we pray that today you would 
continue to show mercy on us. Give us what we need, God. Help us appreciate it. Help us to appreciate your forgiveness for us and help us to forgive others in the same way. And God, we pray that you would sustain us and keep us from sinning against you. We want to be like you. You are our Father. We want to please you. So please keep us from sinning. But God, when we do sin, bring us running back into your arms, knowing that you are so gracious and so patient. And we need you. Please, please make your presence known in our lives today and keep us humble and help us instinctively and joyfully practice your righteousness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.